Ever since the late 1990s, the name Toyota Prius has been synonymous with hybrid vehicle technology, thanks to its range of hybrid vehicles. But while Toyota has been able to get the Prius hybrid right for decades, there's one thing that Toyota hasn't been able to get right, the plug-in hybrid. The first generation Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid as we know it launched a couple of years ago, and it was okay. It was a compliance car, and it did a few miles in all electric range. This is the new 2017 Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid, except it's not called the Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid. The name now is the Toyota Prius Prime. Like the fourth generation Toyota Prius on which this vehicle is based, there's a evolutionary rather than revolutionary change in design language. There's still the centrally mounted instrument cluster that you'll be familiar with if you've ever driven the third generation Toyota Prius, or indeed the third generation Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid. It's just been given some added color and updated to make it look a little less old fashioned. But where the Prius Prime differs from the regular fourth generation Prius is this massive 11.6 inch touchscreen display in the center of the car. Opt for the two higher trim packages for the Toyota Prius Prime and you'll get that as standard. It's clear that Toyota wants to appeal to young app savvy buyers with this large touchscreen display. Kind of poor man's Model S or Tesla Model X, if you will. Now, as anyone who drove the previous generation Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid will tell you, while the car did indeed plug in, it was a bit anemic when it came to electric performance. It could only really manage six to 10 miles of all electric range before its onboard petrol engine kicked in. And that made you feel, well, a little like you were cheating. For this car, however, Toyota's worked really hard to provide a real-world, tangible, all-electric range. Admittedly, it's only 25 miles on the EPA test cycle, but it's a real 25 miles of all-electric range that, if you tell the car you want to drive in EV-only mode, means that you can drive up to and beyond freeway speeds without once turning the petrol engine on. Now, in order to get better range and performance, Toyota's done some significant changes to its plug-in hybrid drivetrain system. Toyota has shoved a 53 kilowatt and a 23 kilowatt electric motor under the front of the car as part of the electronically continuously variable transmission. Now, while that adds up to more than 70 kilowatts, Toyota electronically limits maximum power output from the electric motor to 68 kilowatts. But thanks to the car's design and construction, that's more than enough to accelerate you around town without feeling that you're lagging behind. Sure, it's not Tesla Model S or BMW i3 fast, but it will do. Now, despite putting the 8.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that gives this car its all electric range directly behind the rear seats below the load bay floor, which is not great for center of gravity, this car handles extremely well. It feels very grown up, like the fourth generation of any car I've driven. And this time it feels like Toyota's got it right, at least when it comes to road holding, interior cabin noise, build quality and the like. Now in terms of driving, the Prius Prime behaves very much like the rest of the Toyota Prius family. There's no real regenerative braking on liftoff. There's no option to select that in other than enabling the B function, which is designed not to be used with the electric mode, but to be used with the gasoline engine to provide engine braking functionality, which means if you're going down a fairly steep grade like I am right now, you're gonna be using the brake pedal a lot. One pedal driving, never heard of it in this car. It's just not possible. I'm handling one of my favorite roads in all of the greater Portland area. This is Germantown Road on the west side of town. And this Toyota Prius Prime is handling the road admirably. Yes, you have to be a little bit busy at lower speeds with the steering, 
but it's sticking within the lines and it's not causing me any reason to panic, which is good. Now, one interesting thing to point out here is that the Prius Prime in Japan comes with a Chidemo DC quick charging port. And this car has a little blanking plate where a Chidemo DC quick charging inlet could theoretically go. But much like the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which still has yet to launch in the US, it seems that Toyota decided that Americans didn't want or need quick charging with their Prius Prime. But don't be fooled. This doesn't mean that if you buy one in the US, you're going to be using petrol more than maybe your Japanese counterparts. Sure, if you're going to drive more than 25 miles between stops, you're going to burn dead dinosaurs or dead sea creatures at least. But considering most people's commute is less than 25 miles round trip, this is a car that could admirably handle the daily commute and never operate in petrol mode until the weekend. Now, there are some really other cool features about this car that make driving it in all electric mode far easier than the previous generation plug-in Prii. For example, there's an electrically heated front windscreen, meaning you can clear the windshield without needing to turn on the air conditioning or the car's engine. Then there's a very smart driver-only air conditioning mode. And how that works is it turns off all the other vents in the vehicle and focuses all of its cooling or heating power on you. And now, mercifully, there's a pretty decent smartphone app that you can use with your Prius Prime to set charging schedules and precondition the cabin. Now, when it comes to charging, this car does only have a three kilowatt onboard charger. However, since the battery is only 8.8 .8 kilowatt hours in total capacity, you can charge the onboard battery pack from empty to full in two hours and 10 minutes from a compatible level two charging station. If you only have access to 110 volts, however, charging that battery pack is going to take you five hours and 30 minutes from a standard household US outlet. That might affect how efficient your car is and indeed how many miles you're able to drive per day in all electric mode. Now, while the Chevrolet Volt might have this car beaten when it comes to all electric range, this car wins when it comes to total range per fill of its battery pack and its onboard petrol tank. That petrol tank, which is 11.3 US gallons, when combined with the 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour battery pack, will give you a total range between fill-ups of 640 miles. That's pretty impressive. According to the US EPA, when the onboard battery pack of this car is depleted, it will get an impressive 54 miles per gallon on petrol alone. That's per US gallon, I should note, not UK gallon. The figures will be different for our European viewers. But that's far better than the Chevrolet Volt can achieve when its onboard battery pack is depleted and it needs to use the onboard engine as a range extender. So what do I think of the Toyota Prius Prime? This is how the Prius should have been from the get-go, an efficient hybrid with enough grunt in all electric mode to allow you to drive around town without burning a drop of fossil fuels. But at the same point, this car disappoints me because it reminds me just how good Toyota could be if it only wanted to be when it comes to making an electric vehicle. I own a 2002 Toyota RAV4 EV and for its age and for its time, it was an incredible vehicle. This car could be that modern equivalent of the 2002 Toyota RAV4 EV. But there are some things about this car that just irk me, that make me think that perhaps Toyota intentionally made this vehicle not as perfect as it could have been. For example, the battery pack placement. Now, the 2017 Toyota Prius Prime, just like the 2017 and 2016 Toyota Prius, was designed from the ground up on a brand new joint platform developed by Toyota. Had Toyota wanted, it could have planned for an under the cabin battery pack placement, just as so many other electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids today have. But no, 
Toyota decided it would be okay to wedge the battery pack behind the rear seats and above the rear axle like an afterthought. And it's meant that the load carrying capabilities of this car are not as great as the conventional fourth generation Toyota Prius. For example, the official cargo capacity of the Prius Prime is just 19.8 cubic feet. That's not very good, Toyota. Not for a Prius and not for a vehicle of this size. And then there's the deletion of that fifth seat. The standard Prius, the fourth generation Prius on which this vehicle is based, has three seats in the rear. That allows you to have five people in the car, or four plus the driver. The Prius Prime only has four seats. If you like the Toyota Prius, and there are plenty of people out there who are avid Toyota Prius fans, and you have a daily commute of less than 25 miles or less than 50 miles round trip, you could use the Prius Prime as an EV Monday through Friday. Should you buy one? Well. $27,100 before incentives will get you the entry level model, while $33,100 will get you this model. And this model is going to be harder to convince someone to buy because for just a few thousand dollars more, you could walk away with a Chevrolet Bolt EV with an all electric range of 238 miles per charge. Admittedly, this car is available nationwide and this has a whole host of extra bells and whistles that the Chevrolet Bolt EV doesn't have. And it's a bigger car, uh, but the Chevrolet Bolt EV, I think for most people, would be slightly more practical. That is, unless you absolutely need to drive 640 miles without stopping, charging, peeing. I don't know, maybe you're a robot. But all jokes aside, if you want to make the transition to a fully electric vehicle and you're a hybrid vehicle fan or you are considering a hybrid vehicle, this could be a great transitional vehicle for you. It will give you the benefit of driving all electric most of the week and still have the capability to go longer distance at the weekends. This is also a great car for anyone who lives a long way from public charging infrastructure. If your nearest town is a long way away and you just can't make it in a regular electric car, then this is also a car that you should consider. It's comfortable, it's quiet, it does what it says on the tin. What do you think? Do you like the look and sound of the 2017 Toyota Prius Prime? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll be back soon with more greener, cleaner, safer, smarter car reviews. Thanks for watching. My name's Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and until next time, keep evolving.